Hi, directions for the table tool exercise formula table line numbering. So go ahead and open up that document. And once you open it, you'll notice that it's actually one of four pages. So we'll do um, four different directions in one assignment. So the first one, um, the first page is, notice one of four. The first page is working with tables and columns. Um, we have an extra column in the first table, so click in any row of that column. From the Table Tools Layout tab, select Delete and choose Delete Column. And when you do that, it's going to shrink the size of it. Um, what we'll do instead to get it to go to the far edge of the margin on the window, choose Auto Fit and select Auto Fit Window. It distributes each column of equal width and goes to the far right margin. Um, be anywhere on the first row and we actually need a row above it. From the Tables Tool Layout, choose Insert Above so that we have a blank row above. Um, the right now it's four individual cells. Um, four separate columns. What we'll do is choose Merge Cells. And then we're going to select Automobile Dealership and then drag it right down into the center. And Control E will center that for us. We'll do the same thing in the second table. Choose Table Tools Layout. Insert Above. Go ahead and merge the cells. And the same thing with mortgage alternatives. I'm holding control and dragging it so that I'm keeping it in both locations. But if you dra just drag and move it, that's fine. And center. Now this one's a little different. Um, we noticed that this was set off by tabs and it, it doesn't look as neat as a table does. So what we'll do is select not the title, select the column titles and then all of the column information underneath choose insert table and we're converting it from text to table and it automatically knows that there's three columns and six rows and go ahead and click OK and then again we'll do the same that we did previously is go to layout do the insert above merge the cells and now we can take that title and then just place it right into the first row and center now, if you want to get um, fancy, there's two things you can do. Um, if you wanted the columns to be as wide as the longest item each column, you could choose Table Tools Layout and Auto Fit Contents. So it shrinks it to only the size that it needs to show all of the content in each column. Or if you prefer, you can choose the Auto Fit Window. Um, you can also choose um, Table Tools Design, and under the More Options for Table Designs, you can select different colors, change your mind, and so forth. In the next one, um, page 2, click in the Total column. And what we want to do is add both the, t the hotel and the airfare in the Total column. And there's actually a formula feature in Word similar to Excel. So you're underneath totals and you're on the very first one that you want to add hotel and airfare. Choose the table tools layout and there's actually a formula button. Go ahead and select that and it automatically knows that it's going to have equal sum everything to the left just like um, you would have in Excel. Go ahead and press OK and then if you carefully press your down arrow and press F4 which is repeat down arrow and F4 and keep going to have all of them filled in and then what we'll do is um, we actually need to put this in alphabetic order so I'm going to click in the very first one Jones not last name and I will choose the home tab or actually it's right we can use it here as well table tools layout sort filter and um, it's, it says column one but that's because um, checked off down below it says no header row but we actually do have a header row, last name, first name, hotel. So I'm going to check off header row. And now it knows that it's going to sort by last name in ascending order. Um, this then by, let's say there was two people that had the same last name, then you would choose to look at first name. So if there's two people with the same last name, it, it would then look at the first name. So there is no matching last name, so it doesn't matter if I do that or not. And I'll click OK. And it's in alphabetic order. So I actually need to add a, um, a row on the bottom. So I'll click in the last cell and just press tab. And it gives me a total, uh, a new um, bottom row. And I'm going to type totals. And then I'll just tab over to underneath hotel. And what I wanted to do is add everything above. 
So if you again click the Table Tools Layout formula, it automatically knows to add an equal sum above. Um, if you click this down arrow for number format and you select the longest one with the dollar sign, commas, and decimals, um, when you click OK, you're going to get the dollar signs, commas, and decimals. Carefully press the right arrow, F4, right arrow, F4. Um, and just like any numbers, I'm going to select the three columns that have numbers and I'm going to choose right align so that the decimals are lined up. And if you want to get fancy with the, um, the column title row, you could put it in center and bold. Um, you can also go into design and choose a different design style or color. And there you have it. Page three. So we have four separate tables, and right now everything looks um, kind of messy over on the far left and it's uneven. What we're going to do is actually set tabs. So if your ruler is not on, make sure you click View and you check Ruler so that the ruler is visible. So select the zip codes, the local zip, zip codes, Hoyok 2, Ludlow, and then come up to the ruler and right below the two, just left click with your mouse and it puts a left tab and it's right at the two inch marker. Do the same thing at the four inch marker and you have it perfectly set. Now if you didn't like where it was you could actually hover on the left tab and then just drag it and it moves everything. But we'll leave it at the four, four inch marker. Select the next state attractions, but this time instead of using the tabs here, what we're going to do is click the home tab and click the paragraph dialog box launcher and down at the bottom left corner is a button labeled tabs and we're at tab stop position. The, this one's going to have three tabs. The first one type 1.2. It's left and leader is none, so click set. The next one, you don't have to delete it, just type right over that blue 1.2, 3.4, select for alignment, bar, set, and one more, 5.5, but choose right, set, and OK. So the 3.4 is a bar tab, and that's the line right down the middle. Go ahead and select the next Springfield Pizza Directory, and again, go to Paragraph dialog box launcher tabs this one is one and click set the next one is three um, but this time choose right and set and one more 5.5 right and set and go ahead and click OK I'm gonna have you go back into that one and make an addition uh, correction because if you noticed um, the tab between the first base state pizza and the address is right on top of it because it's a left tab when it should be a right or it's a right and it should be a left. So go back to paragraph dialog box launcher tabs, select the middle one and instead of right choose left. And then what you also do is put on dashes, select three and click set. Select the 5.5, which is the right, which is fine. Click 3 for dashes, set, and OK. Perfect. Now you have a left tab at 1, a left tab at 3 inches, and a right tab at 5.5. The last section, select Carnival to Norwegian. Select Paragraph Dialog Box Launcher, Tabs. The first one is 1.5. It's a left. Click Set. And the next one is a decimal tab, so it lines up all the decimals. So at five inch marker, decimal, and this time I'm gonna use dot leaders and set and okay. So your eye can go across the screen and the decimals are lined up nicely. And if you click in either of the tab sets, you'll notice the tabs for that particular exercise and the tabs for the next exercise and so forth. Last page, select from state of Texas all the way to the end and if you ever wanted something with line numbering like this particular court document you would choose um, layout line numbering continuous and it numbers all of them for you okay save and submit thank you